I'm not constri trying to construct this in about neck deep water or anything. Okay, maintain your arms length away. Once you see that you're on a good shelf, you're gonna work right here from that armpit right here. All right, uh, you guys need to like really get in close to see this, okay? All right, so construct the tractable size. All right, start with the armpit right here. You're gonna create two turns on itself. All right, you're gonna take the free running end and you're gonna reach through that loop, that small bite right there. You're gonna get approximately a forearm's length from this bite right here, from this figure eight. Get about right there. Maintain that. Put it in your armpit. You're gonna take that bite you created and you're gonna take the free running in. You're gonna create an, a second loop right there forward. Just one single loop. One turn on itself. You're gonna free feed that bite through it. You can maintain it as forward as possible. Alright? You're gonna take your two steel ovals, you're gonna snap it back onto itself. Onto that small bite right there once it's through your free running end. Alright, so when you do this. You're gonna snap it back onto itself. And you're gonna ensure the spine sides of this two steel ovals on with each other and the opposing gates are creating an X right there. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so the reason for that is in the event that the, one of these gates gets out or tends to open up, the other one locks in. Because if they were open, if they if they open on both sides together, the free the, the running end of the bite will be able to exit. But if it has opposing gates, they'll still have some type of obstacle in front of it. These will these will pinch in, as you can see the X, how it how it locks all the way to the rear. Uh, to the spine side that's that will that will stop that will stop the uh honey flipping foot rope from locking from the, the two steel ovals okay so we have closing gates we're gonna create one wrap half wrap around the near side anchor point and we're going to connect it back to itself okay like so like so okay once you snap, snap it back onto itself hold on one sec we're gonna ensure that the spine sides remain in contact and the oppose and we still have opposing gates as well. Okay? Once we have that, you let go of that, that figure eight I created and we maintain it from here. Once we have our half wrap as well, we're gonna ensure that it is 18 to 24 inches above water, depending on how, how high the level of waters are. Once we have that, we are then going to give at minimum four arms length, but for today's purposes, we're going to give six. Okay? Six double arms length. He's giving six because the anchor point dips the distance, okay? So that's something, if you guys have the opportunity to see your anchor point before getting up to the competition, that's a win already. Okay. So biggest thing with how much how much you're gonna give them is also the length of the, the waterborne obstacle and the circumference of the tree as well too. Because sometimes, like the difference of these trees, you have some that are uh, thicker than the other ones, like that one's a little bit thicker than that one, or you know this one's thicker than that one, all right? So it's always the circumference of the tree as well and the length of the water obstacle in front of you guys, okay? Once I have all, this, all the uh, slack I'm going to give to the far setting port, I'm going to do the same thing, the same type of signal I'm going to give to the top. Give it a good splash, you're going to get the signal, and you're going to begin to pull all the slack. Normally there's two people over there, it'd be the number one and two man. The number one man's uh, duties are obviously the the, uh, the far side lifeguard, but his additional duties is to help the number two man on construction on the far side anchor point, right? Essentially, he's going to do what uh, Sergeant Pal is doing. He's going to assist him on um, construction, constructing the wraps on the far side anchor point, okay? And as they're doing the wraps, they're ensuring that they're still wrapping 18, inch, 18 to 24 inches above water, ensuring that none of the wraps are looping on themselves. They're getting all the slack out. And he's still remain. He's still wrapping up towards the downstream port, downside, uh, downstream portion, upstream portion. I'm sorry. There's gonna be lots of, uh, lots of times where you're gonna have like small lulls and whatnot, depending on the far side anchor point and whatnot. Because sometimes it may or may seem that hey, it's like it's okay to rest. What's that? I can, you need one more? Okay. So see how that happened? Like six wasn't obviously enough. That's how they're gonna judge across the way. Most you want to give them is another four arms, full double arms length. So as they're doing, as they're constructing on that side, far side anchor point, the remaining platoon can uh, what they can do is they get the, the right formation of order for their movement across the across the waterborne obstacle, and they can uh, check uniforms and all the things like that, ensure that they're in the right waterborne uniform. All right, 
So once they're done with all the, the wraps on the far side anchor point, he's gonna get the same signal and return to the near side anchor point by doing that splash, okay? Hey, once he's over here. You guys are looking to over here too. It's gonna be like super tight. You wanna it should be loose. Your wrap is what's holding this. This has nothing to do with pendulous tension. Tension with not. Alright. So how can you get back here? Helpful? Huh? Helpful? Helpful. Okay. Alright. So once I get the signal back, that's when I can, I can begin pulling the, te the, the tension from the other side, from the far side point back. All right. So everybody's gonna be close, close upon each other. Once we have it, we'll start pulling. One, two, three, pull. 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 All right, so once I have tension right there, I'm gonna put my foot up and gain one more tension pull. One, two, three, pull. That's fine to pull out. And we'll it's ready to move into the near side of the point, like so. Okay. Number five, man. Number five, man. Then we'll work his way to the steel ovals. And then you see he's, he's gaining tension right there by twisting the steel, the, the free running and the transport tightening system. As he's twisting, he's ensuring that his fingers are not in the steel ovals. And we'll give it, and you'll see why in the end. Once he's completely gaining tension, <coughs> he'll then say, I have tension. Got tension. All right. Ensuring, now we can begin our wraps. Ensuring that they're remaining dressed. <coughs> they're not overlapping any other, other wraps. We need at least four to five, minimum four wraps on each side of the back side and the near side of the near side anchor point. So as we're going, oh, wait, wait, wait. we're ensuring we're dressing up the wraps, ensuring none of them are overlapping, that they're touching. have our wraps and then we can be then we can now begin creating our our quick tension release all right for this you're gonna go ahead and get two double on length worth of from the free running end creating a bite right here you have a triangle form with a transport tiny system on top and the free running end right here all right, so as you come right here, if you guys can see, everybody come over here. You have a triangle now right here. Some people the free running in and the transport tiny system right here. All right, you're gonna feed that bite right through. Just drop it like so. You're gonna have a bite from right here and the bite with the free, the remaining end to the back. You're going to come across, maintaining both of them as well. You're gonna pull towards you. And the goal of this is to get this this portion of the free running end and the quick tension up behind the, the near side anchor point as much as possible, okay? There's gonna be events where it can only get to right here depending on the type of tree you have, okay? There's sometimes difficult where you have pine trees that have little cancer lumps in them and whatnot, and it's very difficult for the range students to get them across, but no worries, as long as it is cinched down and it's properly tightened, it'll be fine. But the goal is to get to the back side of the near, near side anchor point, okay? You're gonna pull towards you, shimmy it across. And you possibly have to pull a little out. But the goal is as much as possible. And this is why you have to get double on his leg because you can continuously pull and grab tension. Put your leg up. Again, it's not always gonna work. You're not gonna get it all the way to the far side anchor point, but it's fine. As long as this thing is secured and tightened down on itself, ensure that that last remaining half wrap tension down and dress on itself is 100% fine. You're gonna take another double arm's length, and the way to gain that is to take the end right here, this portion that's, that is to the free running end, or the remaining end of the 150 foot rope, pull a little bit more slack out. Just like so. Make sure that you have at least a good double arm's length. More than enough. You're gonna come back around to your transport tightening system and the first wrap. You're gonna drop that rope down like so. You're gonna reach through this little loop you created. You're gonna pull that free running in right there with that bite you created. You create what we call like a little, ar a little Arby's hat. You ever see that? All right, I'm gonna demonstrate it one more time. Take that, you're gonna throw it between the transport tank system and that first half wrap. Throw it in there, reach through, pull up, just like so, okay? Make sure that you got a good, good handle on both the bite and the Arby's hat. You do the same thing you did with this one. You're gonna try to, the goal is to get it to get as far on the back side of the as possible, okay? Shimmy across. 
All right. So now we're going to stitch it down. I just pull in on the Arby's hat. There. Like so. At the same time, once that's cinched down, I'm going to tell the number six man, go ahead and stow the rest of the, of the remaining end, the 150 foot rope. What we're going to do is going to take that bag, you're going to create a bite as well, and you're going to do the same thing I did. You're going to try to get that 150 foot rope, the, re the remaining end of the 150 foot rope on the back side of the far side of the anchor foot. That way, that way when uh, range students or you know your fellow uh, cadet buddies are going through, nothing's in there, nothing's impeding their way of traffic, all right? Nobody's bumping into this, possibly loosening it up, okay? Once that's complete, I'm gonna come to my door five man, I'm gonna say my rope. You're gonna instantly let go, okay? There's gonna be events where it's kinda like twisted up like this, but it's no worries. Just unravel it like that, all right? And that's because the, that's because either the, the rope is like really dirty or it's just really wet. You're gonna take that rover's command, is gonna take a steel oval and he's gonna connect himself to the spine side of the two steel ovals, like so. Just like that, and now he's, he's complete with his uh, one row bridge construction. Do I have any questions?